Hey, what's up? I'm Ashley. Thank you for watching this video. And we're going to be talking about True Detective Night Country Season 4, Episode 3. So let's get into it. We see Navarro pulling up to what looks to be an abandoned building. And I'm like, what's in there? She's like, knock, 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 APF, open up the door, please. But then she hears someone scream, and that's when she get her gun out. She's like, APF, open up the door now. No one opens the door, so she just opens it herself and goes in. She has her gun ready and she's pointing it at Anne. She confirms it's Anne and that's when she tells her she's under arrest for trespassing in the destruction of private property at the Silver Sky Mining Facilities. But notice that this is seven years ago. Anyway, Navarro's like, put your hands behind your back. But Anne said, shoot me if you want to. But I'm delivering this baby. Turns out it's a birthing center and it's the last one in the region. She said, you're going to arrest me for that too? She like, try me if you want to. And goes back to delivering this baby. And you can tell that almost no one likes Navarro. The girl stopped in the middle of screaming and pushing and said, What's that bitch doing here? Navarro got put to work. They said, go over there and get some hot water. The girl delivers the baby, but the baby is not crying. So Anne and her assistant go over there and start trying to get this baby to breathe and start crying. It takes a while, but the baby does eventually start crying. After the baby is delivered, Anne's like, you can arrest me now. But now Navarro doesn't even look like she wants to arrest her after she just saw what went down. As a matter of fact, we didn't even see Anne get arrested. Then we go to present day, which is December 22nd, the fifth day of night. Hank is out here wilding. Just a few days before Christmas, he out here wilding. He doesn't have policemen out here looking for Clark. He has regular people, just regular civilians out here with guns looking for Clark. Um, excuse me, I don't think that's protocol. Navarro goes up to him and she's like, these guys are a liability. What are you doing? He's like, I'm trying to get all the help I can get. He gets on top of his truck to make an announcement. He's like, we looking for Clark out here. He 5'11", brown hair, brown eyes. Last seen in a pink parka. Armed and dangerous. Navarro told him, we want him alive. He said, do we? Yes, we do. We got to find out what's happening out here. What's wrong with you? And what's going on with these oranges? Navarro picked up an orange. This guy right here who's about to go out there looking for Clark is picking up some oranges and there was an orange in the opening credits. We find out that Lund is still in a coma, the only survivor who was froze out there in that ice. They had to amputate both of his legs and he still might lose his left forearm. Liz said, I still need to talk to him. <laughs> Just don't cut out his tongue. I need to talk to him. <laughs> Then we see that there's 19 boxes of evidence on Clark inside of the evidence room. So she tells Peter to put in a transfer request for Navarro temporarily so they can work on this case, even though she hates her and everybody. Peter then asks her what happened on that last case you worked with Navarro on, which was the Wheeler case. Liz tells him it was a murder-suicide. She told him William Wheeler was in and out of jail a lot. He had things on him like sexual assault armed robbery and assault and battery and the last time he got out of jail he put this 18 year old girl in the hospital twice but she never reported him she says that one day they got the call to go to the house but it was already too late she was dead he killed her and then he killed himself but we see that that's a lie because he wasn't dead when they got inside when they walk inside he's sitting in this chair he looks at them and he starts whistling Twist and Shout by the Beatles. In each episode so far, the Beatles has been involved. So what's going on with these Beatles? Now this is just a guess, but here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that maybe Navarro killed him only because in the first episode, Liz is saying how Navarro has this soft spot for women who's been abused. Or then again, maybe it could have been Liz. Or then again, it could have been none of them. Ain't no telling what's going on. Y'all let me know what y'all think though. Navarro is looking at this orange again she throws it into the distance and after she throws it, she hears this voice that says, help us. Who's talking? And she's just standing there all calm with her flashlight out. Girl, if you don't run, what's wrong with you? So as she's just standing there all calm with her flashlight, a woman comes in on her walkie saying, are you there? And I'm guessing it was to tell her about her transfer because in the next scene, we see her and Liz together with those 19 evidence boxes on Clark. They go through these boxes and they find a whole bunch of pictures. And Liz points out a picture 
that could have been taken in spring 2016. And she knows this because in one of the pictures, Anne is wearing an Ariana Grande shirt from May 2016. And she knows this because her daughter was always playing that album. She points out that in one of the pictures, she has blue tint. But then in the other one, it's fading. So some time had passed. Navarro points out that Anne and Clark look happy together in these pictures and calls it a secret affair, but why keep it a secret? Liz turned to her and said, you still hooking up with that dog runner bootlegging guy, Kavik, or are you back with girls? What, 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 what's going on? And then Navarro's like, are you still effing, I don't know, somebody whose name start with a C? That's what the closed captions say. Then here come Peter busting up in there, interrupting. Can she finish her sentence? Dang, I want to know who she's talking about. I want to know if she's still hooking up with girls. But he leaves. I don't even know why he came in there for. He's just being away. After he leaves, Liz is like, okay, you think no one knew about their relationship? Well, then explain this picture then. She picks up a picture that clearly someone took of them. So she finds this candid picture. Then they find blue hair dye on one of the pictures. So that's when they take a little visit to Susan. They walk in the door and Navarro said, what was that color you used on Annie's hair? She starts looking through Susan's stuff, and that's when she finds electric blue. She looks at Susan, and she says, you lied to me. So that means that Susan knew about Clark and Annie's relationship, but lied about it when Navarro asked her about it. Susan tells Navarro she went to Salah to give haircuts to the men there, and Annie insisted on going with her. She only went with her that one time, but that's all it took because her and Clark hit it off. She said Annie showed Clark her spiral tattoo and ever since he saw it, he's been fixated on it. Navarro asked what did the spiral mean and Susan says that Annie had dreams about it a bunch of times but once she got the tattoo, the dreams stopped. She says that Clark was crazy about Annie but Annie was the one who didn't want people to know about their relationship. Navarro told her you could have told me about this but Susan says that she was scared because she was seeing someone from Salah herself. Liz comes back to the room after she just left the kitchen for making this girl eat macaroni and cheese. She didn't even ask for it. She was like, come on, let's eat some macaroni and cheese. Um, I didn't say I wanted no macaroni and cheese. I want my mama. What? Who is this, mama? Liz said, who were you seeing in Salah? Susan said, this guy named Oliver. He was the equipment engineer and he left right before Annie died. They asked where could they find Oliver and Susan tells them probably somewhere out there on the ice, probably hunting and not looking to be found. But Susan dropped one last thing on them. She said, after they found her, I did call the police, but I just didn't want to talk to you because you would have known who I was. That's why I didn't leave my name, but I did tell them about Clark and they find out that she told Hank. No good Hank. Liz and Navarro are in the car now and Navarro is trying to tell Liz that Hank took her off the case because he's behind this whole thing and that the mind is behind it because why else would he hide what Susan told him? The police has to be behind it. Liz tells her that 50% of the people in this town work for the mines, so half of the people who live here had a reason to come after Annie. Liz starts talking about the tongue popping up after six years and the people frozen on the ice. She starts going into how this is not magic, this is no voodoo or nothing like that because she senses that that's what Navarro is thinking. Do y'all think that too? Liz is on Tinder and Navarro thinks that's weird. So Liz asked her what does she do when she feels lonely. Navarro says she watches Netflix but then says that she prays. Liz laughs at her like it's funny. She said, so you talk to God? But then Navarro shuts her up and says, no, I listen. She didn't have nothing else to say after that. But I tell you one thing, Liz better watch out when Navarro's driving. Navarro has a bad reputation of things just popping out at her when she's driving. Don't know what you're going to get. We already got a polar bear. We already had something going on with her mama's cross. What's going to be next? But Navarro and Liz finally find Hank. They pull up on him on the ice rink and Navarro is heated. She's all up in Hank's face. She's like, you knew about Annie and Raymond Carr's relationship and you didn't say anything. You hit it. And you already know he don't care. He started talking about how many men Annie was supposedly sleeping with. And that got Navarro even more madder. Liz had to calm her down. And then she gets in Hank's face. Liz tells him, get back to your search and get rid of your hillbilly friends. Or you're getting a negligence report. He don't care about no negligence. He told her, maybe I should be filing a report on you for playing Mrs. Robinson with my kid. Insinuating that she's sleeping with Peter. She don't want to sleep with Peter. Yeah, I had to file a report on you for playing Mrs. Robinson with my kid. She threw his drink in his face for that. 
hit it right out his hand to hit his face. Good. One more time for the one more time. Navarro wants Kavik to find out where Oliver is, and Kavik said he'll do it, but only if she'll give him information about herself. She didn't want to at first, but she ended up telling him about her mom, about how she used to live in Ennis, and she used to work in a gold mining camp, but it doesn't exist anymore. She left when she was 15 years old to go to Boston, and that's where she ended up meeting Navarro and her sister's father. But her dad was abusive to both them and their mother, and that's why they ended up leaving Boston and went back to Ennis. She told him that her mom and her sister Jules experienced the same things with the hearing voices and all that, and that one day her mom just got up and left and never came back, and then the next thing she knew, she was dead. Someone murdered her, and her killer was never found. After that, Kavit gave her some information on where she could find Oliver. Leah meets up with her girlfriend at this protest against the mines. And at this protest, they're talking about all the wrong things the people at the mines are doing and all of the negative effects that it has on the town. Then they announced that one of their members had a stillborn, so they had a moment of silence for them. I'm not sure what Leah's purpose is in this show. She's never really doing anything. But I think they're going to surprise us and it end up being something really important. Now Liz is sitting at the table. She's going over Annie's case and she gets up and she starts to put something in the fridge. And when she does this, she hears an echo coming from the fridge. And all she does is stand there and look. I don't know what's wrong with these people in this town. When things pop up, when they hear anything, when they see anything, they just stand there and look at it. They don't do nothing. I'm running. What are they looking for? What's wrong with these people in this town? So she's just standing there hearing this echo. And then Leah comes in the door and she runs upstairs. Now Liz goes upstairs to find out why she didn't come see what she wanted when she called for her when she was in the kitchen. She starts yelling at Leah because she knows that she's been around the protesters. She's like, don't you know what happens to those people? Is she talking about them getting arrested? Or is she talking about them dying? She makes Leah take off the temporary tattoo, the markings, I guess you would call them. I don't know, correct me. Even after Leah told her that one of the members' baby was stillborn, you can tell that Liz was thinking about it like maybe she felt sad or bad about the situation, but she was showing Leah no emotion about it. I just think that Liz thinks that something bad will happen to Leah. Maybe the same thing that happened to her son she thinks will happen to Leah or whatever happened to her husband she thinks is going to happen to Leah. I don't know, but I think it's more to it. Then we get back to Navarro and she's walking outside in the dark in the snow. And it's important to point out that as she's walking, a woman is singing Twist and Shout in this really faint, eerie voice. So as she's walking, she sees what appears to be a person running. So she runs after it. She slips and falls and hits her head. She awakes in this other world where there's no snow. It's dry out there. And where she woke up at, it looks like there was a car accident there. You hear this man's voice say, listen. And then a kid pops up and puts their hand on Navarro's shoulder and says, tell my mommy. I think he's talking about Liz. I think this is Liz's son, Holden. He's holding that same polar bear, and I'm thinking that maybe he died in a car accident. Then Navarro goes back to her car, and that's when someone calls her to let her know that her sister just had a breakdown. She said someone was coming, then she ran away. But Navarro knows where to find her sister. She finds her at this abandoned boat, and Leah tells Navarro that she thinks bad things, and she starts crying. Peter tried to sneak in the house, but he knocked everything over when he tried to get in the bed. Lamp fell over, woke everybody up in the house. The baby's up now. Look what you done did. Peter and his girlfriend are talking about him always being at work and about how things have changed since he became a cop. And she's making her point because at 3.30 a.m., Liz is texting him about work. So now he has to get up and go after he just got home and woke everybody up. Now it's 3.30 a.m. and she's saying that she has an exam at 7 a.m. So she's just going to stay up. Um, you got at least about two hours to sleep. I'm going back to sleep. It's December 23rd, the sixth day of night. And Liz walks into a prayer session and it seems to be too much for her. She don't want to be there. So she goes into the bathroom and when she turns on the water to wash her hands, the water is black. That has everything to do with the mines. So we get back to the ice rink and Peter brought his cousin, who's a vet, to check out the dead frozen scientists. And he tells Liz that they didn't freeze to death. They died before they froze. He thinks they were scared to death 
then died of a heart attack. He says with animals, when they're frozen, their heart rate just drops. They start breathing slowly and they basically just die in their sleep. They die a peaceful death. This right here is not how you die when you are frozen. I don't know what them faces is looking like. I don't know why their faces look like that, but they are scared. And that's not what you look like when you're cold. I don't know what this is, but it ain't that. She asked him if he could do a post-mortem. Go over there and examine him just a little bit. Just a little bit. He looked at her like she was crazy. She said, of course not. That would be illegal. Hank over there breaking the rules. Why can't y'all break the rules? Navarro comes in and says that she's found Oliver after Peter couldn't find him. So Liz and Navarro head over there to go pull up on Oliver. They get to Oliver's house and there was a lot of people outside. It looks like there could have been some tents. They were camping outside or something because it don't look like all those people can live and fit in that house. But I don't know. I don't know their living situation. The two men at first didn't want to tell Navarro or Liz where Oliver was, but then pointed to the house. So Navarro and Liz just walks inside of this man's house. He told them, take one more step and I'm going to blow your brains out. Oliver asked Navarro her name and she said, I'm A.T. Evangeline Navarro. He said, no, who are you? She said, I just told you. And he said, oh, you forgot, didn't you? So what that mean? They tell him they're there to talk about Annie. He's like, I'm not talking to y'all about nothing. Get out. Unless y'all got an arrest order, you need to leave. She told them, you want us to get one, we can get one for you. For the deaths of the Salah scientists. And he's like, they all died? Even Lun? Now, why would he ask specifically about Lun? Is Lun a vampire? He can't die? He did seem shocked, like he didn't know that that happened or anything. And then he makes them get out his house. He take out his gun, he points it at them. He's like, get out my house. So they leave. And as they're in the car, they get a call to go down to the hospital to check on Nun. And when they get to the hospital... The nurse lets them know that his gangrene has spread everywhere, that he's had multiple amputations, and that he's lost his eyesight. But what she didn't say was that he was in there looking like a zombie. I'm like, what happened? Did I change the channel? Is this The Walking Dead? He was in there, mouth wide open, growling. Liz is trying to hurry up and get something out of him. She's like, what happened out there on that ice? But all he said was, we woke her. He continues and says, and now she's out. She's out there in the ice. She came for us in the dark. Who? 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 I'm sounding like an owl. Liz was like, who's out there? Who? Who? Who you talking about? I hate when people don't tell me what I'm asking for. I'm asking you who you talking about. You over here telling me X, Y, Z. But I'm asking for L, O, M, O, P. <laughs> and he going to start growling. He all like, Arr. I'm asking you a question. Then we got Navarro over there looking like she in shock because she's hearing whispers and getting a flashback. She hears the voice of a lady saying she's awake. Then a fight breaks out in the waiting room. What they fighting for? Liz goes to break it up, but Navarro stays back to watch from the doorway. Why? He doesn't need any watching. His legs are gone. How you gonna get up and walk? So as she's watching from the hallway doing nothing, being no help, Lun gets up and he's looking like a zombie. Looking like a zombie. But this zombie can talk. He said, hello, Evangeline. <laughs> and then she walks in closer. She gets closer to him after he said that. He said, your mother says hello. She's waiting for you. Is he possessed? Because I'm pretty sure that's not his real voice. Then points at her, lays back down, and dies. He went on ahead and died after he done said and did all of that. Peter was finally able to crack Annie's phone and they find this video of Annie and in the video, Annie is saying, I found it. She's clearly afraid of something. She starts to state her name and says that if anything happens to her and then boom, she's gone. She starts screaming and we don't see her on the screen anymore. She's screaming and she's screaming until the show goes off and it goes black. They show us this, but I can't make out what it is. I don't know. Help me. I don't know what this is, y'all. But let me know all of your theories and predictions down in the comments so we can talk about it. And if you haven't already and want to see more videos like this, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you in my next one.